Now that we've arrived at a definition of limits as x approaches infinity, let's test out that definition on a couple of the examples that we gave previously. So we know that the 1 over x function, the farther away from the origin x gets, then x approaches, or, or the height uh, y approaches 0. So that certainly fits that definition, that it gets as close to one particular value as we want. And therefore, we'll write that the limit for that is 0. Next, c. c, of course, is that constant value line. Well, you can get um, as close as you want to the height of a constant. Um, because the height of the constant is the constant, and so by getting far enough away from the origin in x, you certainly achieve that. And so that limit exists, and the limit is, in fact, c. So the limit for 2 is 2, and the limit for 5 is 5, and so forth. Now for x, as x gets larger, the x as a function simply has a higher and higher height. And so it's clearly not getting as close as we want to one particular value L. And so its limit is uh, infinity. We could also say that it does not exist. But since we know that x is heading up, we'll just say that its limit is infinity. Let's try a couple of more here. Let's try a few more examples. What about the e to the x function? Well, if you recall, that function looks, uh, let's just write, that function looks like this. And <coughs> if x was heading up, as x headed towards infinity, e to the x is heading up much faster. So we'll list its limit as infinity or or simply say that the limit does not exist. e to the negative x on the other hand is a little different. Here the function asymptotically is approaching the x-axis so here the limit does exist. ln x students often have trouble at the beginning of a year remembering what the ln function looks like I wonder if it feels slighted. The ln function grows, but it grows more and more slowly as time goes on, or as we progress out along the x-axis. Nevertheless, it does not ever approach one particular height, l. And so we're going to say that the limit of this as well is going to be infinity, because we can see it's going up. Again, it would be appropriate to say that this limit simply does not exist. Now we come to a couple of more interesting cases. We recall what the sine function looks like. It simply goes like this and continues that way indefinitely. So it's definitely not going up towards infinity, nor is it going down towards negative infinity. But we're going to have to conclude that the limit does not exist. Why? Because it never gets close to one particular value. It keeps oscillating. Let's lastly look at a rather complex function, sine x over x. And here I want to introduce the graphing calculator, because sometimes that can be used to give you a some intuition about how the limit will work. So if we quickly switch to add in the graphing calculator, you can see that I've put sine of x over x in as the function. By the way, I'm in radians mode, as you'll see. And then if we uh, graph that, we get something that looks like this. Well, why is that? Well, if you think about it, what have we got? I'll just rewrite the function here. We're talking about sine x over x. The sine part, the numerator, 
continues to oscillate like this. But what happens to the denominator? It keeps growing, and so the overall function is declining. And when you combine these two, you get what you see there in the graph. So even though it oscillates, our intuition tells us, and we will not prove it today, but, our, but we could prove it, our intuition tells us that this gets closer and closer to one particular value and that that value is zero. Again, this definition may seem a little long and perhaps awkward at first, but this is the one completely accurate test that you can apply in order to know whether a function does in fact have a limit at infinity and you can intuit what it is.